Hello, my name is Elena with Girls Inc. at YWCA Minneapolis. We're really excited to start up our Women of the Week series. Um, this week we're going to welcome Erin. Uh, could you introduce yourself with your name, pronouns, and a fun fact about yourself? Yeah, so uh, my name is Erin O'Neill and I use she, her pronouns. It's really nice to meet you guys um, and girls and everybody else. And uh, fun fact, I uh, have one daughter. She just turned one last week. Um, I also have one rat who is very, very old and just turned two a few weeks ago, which is a lot for a rat, like a lot. So, um, yeah. And I have a husband and I don't know, he has an age too, but it's less <laughs> relevant. Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you again for joining us. I know a bit about your background, but would love for you to share some of that with the rest of the audience here today. If you could share a bit about your career, um, your background, especially with remote programming and maybe a few highlights from that. Sure. Um, so I am a computer programmer by training. That's what I went to school to do. That's what I've done my whole career. Right now, my title is um, director of engineering at a local startup. Um, it's a startup that helps startups, which means that we know how to make software and we only work with people who are starting companies that are themselves underrepresented. So no white men basically. You got to be, some some part of that needs to not be you. Um, and then we help people get their software made. So um, I've only been there for a few weeks. Before that, I was a manager at another small software company. And before that, I worked at, at various places. So um, to put it in chronological order, I went to college, got a degree in computer science, graduated and got a job at a, at a place making software. I didn't really know the language, how they, like the stuff that they did there, I just learned on the job. Um, and then I had a few more jobs and I went and worked for myself for a little bit. Um, and working for yourself, you as a computer programmer anyway, is a, basically always sitting at a screen, staring at it, talking to people on the phone, but you don't have an office to go to. You don't have people to, um, you know, see every morning and you maybe jump on a phone call with your clients or you maybe do something with video like we're doing here. But it was it was figuring out how to work by myself um, without without other people around me. Um, and then when I decided to go back to working for other people, because I would just was kind of lonely, to be honest, um, the company that I worked for was what's called a fully remote company. So that means that they didn't have a, a, you know, an office anywhere. Everybody in that company lived all over the world. So as long as you could work during, um, you know, daytime in North America, you could live anywhere. So we had one person who lived in China and he worked at night and that just was what he wanted to do. Not what I wanted to do, but that's okay because the point of that company was like, you could be flexible as long as you can make it work. Um, so my team, I had people I, that were, that were like, uh, in Portugal, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Florida, some in Minnesota, um, East Coast. I mean, it's just all over. So that was really fun. And it was a really interesting experience to learn how to work with all of those different people in all of those different places and the things that you have to do that are a little different than if you get to see somebody every day um, because you just happen to be in the same space. So now I have a new job. Uh, at a company that has an office in Northeast Minneapolis, but like all of you, I don't go there anymore. So we've accidentally become a fully remote company pretty much overnight. Um, and that's a, a little bit harder. I mean, it's a lot harder when you didn't um, build your company that way, right? Like the, the first company I was at, that's, that's what they always were. So from day one, that's how they were figuring out how to work. This one is a company that relied on everybody being in the same place most of the time, and suddenly they're not. So it's a, it's a different set of challenges, and we're working through it. But just like everybody right now, we're working through it, and we'll figure it out. So can you tell us a bit about what it's like to be a female leader in your field? It's interesting some days. <laughs> um, there's not – it's getting a lot better, but the gender balance in – tech is not great. Um, and even in the places where there is more gender balance, there's a lot of subtle and overt sexism, just to be really honest about it. Um, it's definitely getting better though, um, because a lot of amazing women and non-binary people came before me and they did a lot of fighting and now I'm there and um, 
some days just showing up and being being a boss is the best you can do and that's making a difference too um so it's really uh it can't it has moments where it's hard it has moments where it's really amazing because there are other there are other female leaders in tech who are incredible and it's amazing that i get to hang out with them and talk to them um and yeah it's better every day um and and probably the best part about being a female leader as opposed to just a woman in tech is that i have the i have a little bit of control to create the spaces that i work in so i have a little bit of control over saying like i don't like this part of tech so we're not going to do that here we're not going to do that in the places that i have influence over and that is pretty incredible um so getting to change some of the stuff that i had to deal with and just say no one else deals with this at least not around me um, has been very rewarding. Thank you. That's so great to hear. Um, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about how are you strong, smart, and bold in your life right now? Answering anything about life right now feels so weird because life is so weird right now. Yeah. Um, but a few different ways, I think, I'd like to think. Um, one is, like I said, I have a daughter um, and I still work full time and I intend to do that. Um, I want her to grow up knowing that, uh, yes, I love her very much, but I also work and that's okay. And I'm gonna do that to provide for our family. Actually, her dad stays at home with her full-time right now and I work full-time. Um, and that's just a thing that is gonna be true and everybody will be okay. Um, also, like I said, I just started a new-ish job being a director, and that is taking a lot of boldness and smarts, but it's pretty rewarding because I have been in this field for 13 years, and so now getting to have that title that feels really fancy, it's like, it really feels validating of like, okay, I am smart. I do know some stuff. Let's do this. Um, so that's also pretty great. Not that I need the external validation, but everyone likes it, right? So it's it's just a nice milestone to feel like, yep, I'm doing this, something's working right. Yeah. So as you mentioned, we're all in a lot of transition right now, and we wanted to get your advice from your past experience working remotely about how do we all do the best that we can with that transition? From your past experience, what are things that are useful for working remote? What are things that are barriers? Um, how do you take care of yourself during this? So we'd love some advice from you to just think about that of uh, how do we not only set ourselves up for success with remote working, with remote distance learning, um, but how do we also take care of our minds and bodies during this process? Sure, there are so many places I could start. Um, but uh, where I will start is one of the hardest things about working remote is that the way that you connect to other people changes. Um, because you no longer get the chance to just be walking down the hallway and see somebody or know that you're going to see somebody at the same period every day or something. You know, it's just it's totally different. The only people, especially right now, that we see accidentally at all are the people we live with. So my first piece of advice is to be really deliberate about making sure that you're reaching out to people and making sure that you're creating connection with people. Um, in work, what that often looks like is instead of being like, oh, we'll probably, I'll probably run into this person and we'll talk in the lunchroom. It's like, I know that that will never happen. So if I want to talk to this person, I have to either message them or I have to ask them to jump on a call like this with me. And that's um, a little bit more effort than, you know, not doing it, but it's really, it's really good to do. So my first bit of advice is just reach out to people, schedule these things, or even unscheduled, be like, hey, I'm bored. Do you want to jump on and talk about this problem set that we just got? Do you want to even just have the camera on and I'll work on my paper and you work on your paper, but we'll just be on the computer together um, and just do things to create create ways to break down the isolation. Um, yeah, and then I think the other big thing to keep in mind is that when the place that you live and the place that you work or the place that is your school become the same place, you have to be more deliberate about creating space because otherwise it all runs together and your brain never really gets a break. Like you're not fully present for the school stuff, but you're also never fully disconnected and relaxing at night. Um, 
so with what I do, for example, for work is I wake up and I, I start working pretty much the same hours. I take a long break at lunch so I can hang out with my kid and my dad or my dad, well, her dad. Um, and then, uh, work through the afternoon and then I stop and we make dinner and we hang out and I put the baby to bed and then I have my own time. And that's like kind of the schedule of the day. It's not the same schedule that I had before this, but it is something that's kind of consistent. Um, I also work in the office that you see around me, which is also my sewing room. So I have all the fabric over there, but um, I work in here. I'm super lucky that I have a space I can work that has a door that I can shut. Not everybody has that, but it's worth finding something that is specifically the space where you work and then only working there. So trying not to, um, like you, you don't, I don't like to be working while I'm sitting on the couch or I don't like to be in my office, like playing video games, you know, like I try to have a separation. So it, it's not as easy if you have a small house or if you share a bedroom or whatever, but even if it's just like, you know what, I always sit in this chair at the dining room table when I work, and then I don't sit there other times. Like any kind of separation that you can make um, is going to be really helpful for your mental health so that your brain has this idea of like, this is the place where we work. This is the place where we don't work. This is the place I get to relax. Thanks so much for that advice, Erin. Yeah, well, thank you again for having me. This is really fun. It's great to get to talk to everybody. I, you know, the last thing I want to say is just these are very different, strange times. Um, things will not be exactly the same as they were, and that's okay. Um, but take care of yourself. You know, figure out how to put these sort of like whatever mental divisions you need between school and not school. Figure out um, how to move still. Uh, figure out how to to get some exercise and dance or, you know, talk to your friends like, those things are important and you should figure out how to work them into your day just as much as your school work or whatever. And um, just respond, like figure out what you need and then figure out how you can give it to yourself. And we'll all get through this. Thank you again, Erin. Such important things for us to all be thinking about and be reminded of in this time. Thanks so much for joining us. Hope you all have a great day.